How can we think about the interplay among technology, society, and change? In, in these explorations here, we will use a three-dimensional framework, basically saying that technology and social change co-evolve. And these are the three dimensions. And uh, these three dimensions, we go uh, more in detail, we explore the different aspects of them. In the first one, we basically start with the technology, and that is everything you can touch call it hardware or infrastructure, and everything you cannot really touch, call it software or services. And then the human is also in the mix, socially constructing the technology. Technology is to be socially constructed. So the human is a very important part of this you know, underlying uh, infrastructure of what, what we're doing here. And what we're doing with digital technology is we put aspects of the information, communication, and knowledge processes of society into electronic networks. That's why traditionally we called it the e-government, the e-business, e-commerce, e-health, e-education. And that, that E in front just basically tells you that part of the information, communication, and knowledge is in electronic networks. And there are many more. Uh, call it e-social network combined with news. It's called social media or um, e-banking or, or cyber war. You can also call it with this other prefix. Many more of them. And we always have them. I mean, we, what's the difference between e-business and e-commerce? Well, what's the dif difference between business and commerce? Um, there's a clear distinction. <laughs> Feel free to look it up. Uh, also, even social networks. We had them long before there were digital networks. Close your eyes right now and think about your friends or, or your family. I mean, that's you just like imagine your family, you basically imagine a social network. And what we do is we put that, really, we put that into digital networks and then we call it the E something. And combined with news, we call it social media. So, so that's what we do in future generations. They will just drop the E and actually we already now, you know, 25, more than 25, quarter of a century in, we, we don't say that anymore. We don't say, I don't know, Amazon is an e-commerce. No, it's just, it's a, that's, that's, that's what it is. It's a company, <laughs> basically, right? And, and then in the third one, we manage change. And we have in uh, systems theory um, and in complex adaptive systems, we have two ways of dealing with change, we can reduce and stabilize change, or we can reinforce change. The technical lingo for that is negative feedback and positive feedback. So uh, these are the three dimensions. And you basically, again, let's go quickly to them. You have the development of, let's call it technology. That's, that's the basis, uh, the development yeah, of this, of this technological uh, infrastructure on basis of which we build. Then you have technology for development or for social evolution, for social change, and you have the development instruments. So here you have public sector policies, you have private sector strategies, business strategy, or social change agendas from NGOs. So basically here you try to socially construct that. So this framework I developed when I still was working before I joined academia. I worked for over a decade for the United Nations, for the United Nations Secretariat. And there, uh, we use this framework a lot and we actually structure, structured digital development action plans for entire world regions for it. And we will in the next explorations also go deeper into how this framework basically aligns with the most common digital thinking frameworks that are used in industries and in engineering and in standards. So I, I will walk you through that. But it has basically everything. It has the tech, it has the social change and it has the social construction. That's why it's useful. It's, and never forget the social construction. You can also do it the other way around, right? Social change is socially constructed through digital technology. Now, what we will work our way up to during these lectures is this third dimension, the managing change. And that is often forgotten. Often we also train, also in the university, we are guilty, we train our students like, to become really good engineers and that might also be here 
whatever business MBAs, business engineers or, or political scientists and whatever that have you know good understanding of how to create and change actually society and then with companies just go out and do things or with public sector strategies. But actually here, this managing change, that is, it's a science by itself. And that's what we will work our way up to. And we have to understand, uh, understand that. And as I said, in systems and systems theory and complex adaptive systems, which I've been trained in, there are two different ways of managing change of in, a emerge, in an emergent system. And that is, you can stabilize it or you can reinforce it. Now, very broadly speaking, you can think about it as the stick and the carrot. <laughs> and that's, we could think about it that way. So let's start with that. So, so for example, you have regulation, you could through you know, regulation on it and many companies also regulate, say that that is our business philosophy and that's what we do and that's what we not do. Governments have regulations and have laws uh, or you can give incentives. So you have the carrot, so you have the stick and the carrot basically and you give subsidies or you foster or you hire more people and tell them to work in this new division and you try to create something new so you give incentives with that so we will play around then with this cube it's kind of like a magical cube that we can also take apart during the different sessions and we can focus on very specific things just like really on the technical hardware and see what are the innovations that's going on there be it in deep neural nets or in the blockchain, for example, or in a 3D metaverse infrastructure, or you can zoom in on a specific application. For example, regulation or legislation for e-government and for, for, for the infrastructure that we have there. Data privacy laws for municipalities, for example. My, one of my uh, master theses a long time ago focused on, on that. And you can really, like, you can write an entire master thesis about that. It's, it's, it's amazing. Or you go cross cutting S services, for example, generative artificial intelligence is very important. And you can have some projects to say, okay, let's use generative intelligence for, well, socially constructed for the good, for world peace, for better understanding of different cultures, for example. And that can affect many different aspects of it, a generative AI that fosters diversity and, and, and lessens discrimination, for example. So you can have incentives working towards that. Or you focus on a specific sector and say like, oh, I, I focus on hardware, software, on human in a specific sector. And that could also be e-business and you focus uh, you use all the tools you have at hand. You can reinforce some, regulate some others. So let me maybe take a couple of minutes to talk about this positive and negative feedback. And in the last uh, parts of this exploration, and there are several lectures that have of content between that, we will get back to that. So I wanted to start also start out with that. And that's the positive and negative feedback and just show you and explain because otherwise I always get a lot of questions what this is actually about. Well, okay. What is positive and what is negative feedback in complex systems theory? Well, these are basically, that's all you can do in a system. So you have an emergent system going on like a social system and you can focus on different aspects, on the politics, on the economy, on the, on the health, on the education, whatever you want. And then you can do two things. Either you can put oil into the fire, blow it up or water into the fire and turn it out. Both of them are positive feedback. Or you can kind of like regulate the fire and keep it like in the middle. And that is called negative feedback. Funny, huh? So negative feedback doesn't mean turn the fire out. It just means you stabilize the size of it. Positive feedback is either blow it up, oil in the fire, or water and completely extinguish it. So both of that is positive feedback. Think about it, I'll give you some examples. For example, one example of positive feedback is you would have money in your account, you earn interest. Oh, then you have more money in your account, right? Well, then if you have more money account, you earn more interest. Well, then you have more money in your account, then you earn more interest. So you basically, that's positive feedback. So it goes up over time. That's what I said, put oil into the fire. But it could also be you have money in your account and then you pay a fee. So then you have less money in your account. And, and then if you again have to pay a fee, you have less money in your account. And then if you again have to pay a monthly fee, you have less money in your account. And at the end, you know, like, you won't have any left because every every month they take out that fee. And what what are you left with? That you go you go towards zero. Both of that is positive feedback. 
because you just keep on going in one direction. Now, negative feedback stabilizes it. And that's a lot of the supply and demand dynamics, for example. So you have the prices and then you have purchases of demand. So if prices are higher, people buy less because who would buy such expensive stuff? Now, if people buy less, they're like, hey, I'm not selling anything. Maybe I lower the price. So you lower the price, then people buy more because, hey, it's really cheap, right? And then if they buy more, then you say like, hey, that's so popular. Maybe I should increase the price. And then they, so it stabilizes. That's what supply and demand does. So we would say that's negative feedback. It stabilizes, the price stabilizes. Oh, and it keeps it eventually in the middle. It might go up and down, zigzag as supply and demand. Or think about a thermostat. So you have the temperature in the room and then if it gets too hot, the air condition turns on. The air condition turns on and it brings it down. And then if the temperature goes goes too much down, if it's too low, then the heat goes on. And then it is like, so the thermostat basically keeps it, it keeps it in the middle. So these are the two ways you have in order to manage change. And I come from this complex adaptive systems approach where technology has agency and we weave it into the social evolution. So we will talk a lot about evolving social systems, complex evolving social systems. Now, they can both also be in this same. Now I make it a little bit more uh, complicated. So for example, if you have, if you get a lot of training and you're well-trained, well, then you're really prepared. So you have more chances of winning a scholarship, right? Because then you're like, you're really good. So you, you might get a scholarship. Now, if you get a scholarship, then you have more training and you might get a, a better scholarship. And then you are really, then you get more. So this is a positive feedback cycle. But it might also be the other way around. Like you don't get that scholarship. So, well, then you have, you know, to take up a job, which actually doesn't allow you to study. So you don't have a lot of training. You apply for the next scholarship and they say like, who, like, no, that like cannot even write straight because you're like between this job and, this, and you don't really have, it, you know, it gets less and less. It's like a vicious circle downward. Both of them are positive feedback again, oil or water into the fire. Negative feedback uh, would be, again, supply and demand dynamic is a typical example of that. So there are a lot of IT professionals, so I don't need a lot of scholarships. I, I have enough. But if I don't have enough scholarships, maybe people say like, oh, no, I cannot you know, study. So, so I don't have enough IT professionals, so I have to increase the number of scholarships. Now, if there are enough scholarships, then I get more IT professionals. And then if I, so again, so it can also be, you know, more is less and less becomes more and that stabilizes again. So I hope this is clear now. I just wanted to take it away. We will get to back to that in the last in the last sessions, but I wanted to say that's what we work our way up to. But before we get to that, we have to really work through this, what the technology is, what social change is and how they go together. And then we can see how we socially construct it and, and weave it in. It's a very, you know, it's, it's, these are emergent phenomena that that we're dealing with. Now, before we get there, let me tell you one last caveat. And that is already in the slides that I showed you, the slides with, you know, the progress and uh, the evolution and the different technological, the innovation theory. It seems like we always make progress and that's that's how it is and that's good. Let me be very clear before we get starting on this exploration that I want to tell you, I, I do not know. <laughs> and nobody knows. Technological progress is that, it's progress. And it's not necessarily equal to development either. So when I was working for over a decade at the United Nations, we call it development, and that's different, human development. It's different also than progress and technological progress. So I just wanna put this out there. Progress comes from, it comes from the Latin word progredi, and that means to move forward. So you basically walk, you advance, you, you progress, you move, forward and which direction we don't know and sometimes it's not it's not clear the direction and then we find out a hundred years later that oh you know what with this combustion engine actually like are we heating up the planet like is that actually what are we like can we get to put this genie back into the oh maybe we should positive negative like what we have left oh my goodness should we do something or maybe you know what so the direction that we progress with technology also I mean, it's socially constructed and it's in our hands. And that's also different than 
development. And who knows if development is actually also the right thing. So develop is the opposite of envelope. So develop means it like rolls out. Envelope, like you roll it in. And that's in many different language. In German, you say Entwicklung. Das das Gegenteil ist von Einwicklung. Or in Spanish, you say Desarrollar, que es el contrario de Enrollar. No, Desarrollas y Enrollas. And then says, you have the ones that rolling out. So that means it's already all there, just like to be rolled out. Like, really? And maybe it goes circular. Who knows? Like maybe we all we do is correct. So I just want to also make clear that I'm also not certain as, as well as nobody. And we have to be all we need to do is really you know, spend some time, think about these issues as well, technology and progress and how we push it and how it affects society, how we socially construct our reality and what direction we want to progress to so urgently and what we want to roll out and maybe some things we better don't roll out who knows and sometimes maybe it's good to go back in circle anyways i wanted to have this as a caveat as well just a word but this is the framework we will work with and in the following session we will go much deeper around and playing around with the cube and I, i'm looking forward to that